The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد سو دكتور سو نبي ابراهيم عليه السلام واز انستركتد باي الله سبحانه وتعالى تو بيلد ذا هولي كعبه تو ريبيلد ات كوريكت ناو وي وي ار وير ذات اربس اند جوز اوريجينيت فروم Uh, Nabi Ibrahim's offsprings, which is uh, Nabi Ishaq alayhi salam and Nabi um, Ismail. I- Ismail. And Arabs originate from Nabi Ismail and Jews from Nabi Ishaq, correct? Well, some, some of the Arabs. Some of the Arabs. Yeah. No, Would you like no. to clarify? Uh, well, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is amongst the descendants of uh, Nabi Ismail alayhi <coughs> salam. Just as like uh, Moses and Jesus are the descendants of Ishaq alayhi uh, salam as Ma'in. Um, and um, um, they, um, the descendants of Ismail obviously grew in, um, um, in Mecca because this is where they started. Ismail started his, his life there as a young uh, boy or an infant. Probably, um, and uh, <coughs> amongst the descendants of uh, uh, Ismail were uh, the likes of Hashim, Abdul Muttalib, Abdullah, who are the ancestors, uh, forefathers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu um, alaihi We can go into talking about these individuals who are, uh, uh, if, if you like, um, and. Um, Sort of the role and in, in the society that they had, uh, and the status that they had, uh, inshallah, just to sh- shine light of on, course, the, yeah. on the um, ancestors of the of the Prophet Muhammad So the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family descends from Nabi Ismail alayhi salam. Um, through them, are there any? who are prophets among the descendants of the Holy Prophet? Are there any who are appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, run, let's say, Mecca, the Holy Kaaba? And um, I read regarding the Holy Kaaba that Bani Hashim, which is the tribe of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they were in charge of the Holy Kaaba. Is that correct? And uh, that the Hajj pilgrimage existed from before, mm-hmm. before the, the beginning of Islam, the birth of Islam. Mm. Now that Hajj, was it connected to monotheism? Certainly, yes. So um, was it taught by uh, Prophet Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Yes. So the Hajj was, was it the same? Like we know it now, like taught by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I haven't sort of researched that to see exactly the details of the Hajj at the time of beginning from Adam alayhi <coughs> salam through various prophets alayhi salam until Ibrahim and from there mm. onwards. But um, <coughs> obviously we know that uh, people like Hashim, Abdul Muttalib, um, who, are, who were, if you like, the guardians of the Kaaba at the time, they performed uh, Hajj and there were Hajjaj coming around. Uh, coming uh, every season mm. to the Hajj to Mecca, and that's why they were the guardians. Of them. They were taking care and they were providing services. Um, I, I will come to uh, the fact that why Hashim is called Hashim and the service that he was doing. But so yeah, people used to come for Hajj. Hajj was known 
even from uh, before uh, adv the advent of Islam, uh, at least which the Islam which started with the Prophet I say Islam, all the religions, the religions that the various prophets brought uh, was nothing but Islam. Yani Allah subhanahu they, the, those prophets, whether it was Moses, Jesus, Ibrahim, uh, Noah, and so on, <clears throat> um, um, they were dispatched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as prophets and messengers to humanity, and they came along with a message uh, and with a religion, and that religion is nothing but Islam. Um, um, so the religion of all these people, in the deen and Allah Islam. So Allah wouldn't send different religion to different, different prophets and different people. Um, the Sharia may be different, the laws may be slightly different, but the religion is a, uh, is the same religion. And uh, if you see, now that we're getting into this, if you see um, the um, teachings in the Quran, the references are made uh, that the uh, Islam or Muslim, Muslimin, is used frequently for the followers of various prophets. Um, one which I cite, I, because we don't want to go into this, if we, we can, so if, if like we can, I can make a presentation about all, all these verses in the Quran which refers to Muslim for uh, various prophets. Um, uh, uh, Nabi Yusuf ala nabina wa alihi wa alihi salam says in the Quran, Tawafani uh, Musliman wa alhaqni bi salihin. Oh Allah, uh, Make me die a Muslim. Tawafani Musliman. Wa alhaqni bi salihin. So that I can join and, and uh, give me the successor, I, I, I join the salihin, meaning uh, the pious, meaning Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Uh, uh, the, 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 the salihin in here, or the intention of, uh, of Nabi Allah Yusuf, ala Nabi wa alihi wa alihi salam, uh, are, are Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. But the point is, Tawafani Musliman. Um, <clears throat> so his wish was that he dies a Muslim. And um, so all the prophets were Muslim, the religion Islam, their followers, the true followers of all the various prophets, uh, if you like, were Muslim with lowercase m. <clears throat> and uh, so they did have the Hajj. And, um, and as I said, if you see the Hadith and so on, at the time of Hashim, he used to provide, if you like, services in terms of food and drink for the Hujjaj. Okay, um, so yes, uh, they they had they had the Hajj, they had pilgrimage. The answer to your question is that they did. They were Hujjaj. They were people who were coming for Hajj during that time. <coughs> um, with regards to what we know as today as the clan of the Holy Prophet وسلم, is called Bani Hashim. Now, th th this originate, we always know that they take the, the, the title Bani Hashim, they add it to the originator of the tribe, let's say. Was Hashim the great grandfather of the Holy Prophet? Yeah. And he was the originator. Where, where did he come from? Well, if you like, they, Bani Hashim has referred to after him, are taken after him because, because of his status uh, and standing in society and because of the services he provided, because of the virtues he had, uh, they all followed the religion of, uh, if you like, uh, uh, Deen Ibrahim, as they say. Um, <clears throat> so they followed the Sharia and the teachings which had, uh, they had received uh, in accordance with the uh, Deen Ibla religion of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Um, Hashim became known Hashim. Hashim is from the word Hashima. Uh, when you break dry bread, you know, and make food to give to the people. Basically, there were famine in Mecca, and um, Hashim, he arrived and he realized that there's famine and so on. He had, he ordered that his, his uh, camels are killed, slaughtered, so that they are, and they are, the, the, the meat is, is, is cooked and given to the people of Mecca. Now, how many thousands were there? I don't know. Um, so he went out of his way to make sure that people, uh, you know, eat the food that they require, they receive the food that they require, 
And as I said, he slaughtered his camels to do that. And he continued to do that. Okay? And that's why people looked up to Hashim. Obviously, he, 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 he provides such a great service to them. He basically, he, uh, if you like, he saved them from uh, probably a certain death, uh, or at least for a, a large majority of the people. Uh, so he became unique in that sense, and that's why when they, people started referring to the descendants of Hashim, they say Benu Hashim means sons of Hashim. These guys are the sons of Hashim, because he became a, a, a standing point, he became a, a, a major figure, if you like, in society. Not only that, as I said earlier, he used to make uh, provision of food and drink and water and so on uh, and uh, bread and whatever for the Hujjaj. So he, he, it was part of his responsibility it to look after the pilgrims. And if you like, uh, uh, he, he taken it upon himself to do that. If you like, this is, this is very similar to what we have in our time uh, that people do for the Zawar of Imam Hussain alayhi salam on the occasion of Arba'in. Oh, yes. So um, Hashim did it um, at that time, not only when there was famine, but also when, uh, according to certain reports, when they were uh, during the Hajj season. So that proves that, of course, there was people were coming to Hajj. Um, yes, it was Jahiliyyah. And more and more Jahiliyyah become prevalent. Uh, That's what I wanted to ask but, you. But well, monotheism was there. Um, people who uh, said that worship, um, uh, idol worshipping is wrong, they were there. People who strayed, uh, sorry, who, who stayed on the mm. path of the religion of Ibrahim, the right path, and make sure they didn't stray, uh, they were there. Most notable were the likes of Hashim. Uh, Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Muttalib and um, um, of course Abdullah who is the father of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa salam um, and of the forefathers of the Prophet. So uh, people like Abu Talib and of course indeed we have that uh, 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 and there are reports which is in Bihar and various other books اعتقادات uh, الصدوق as well that uh, Abdul Muttalib was Hujjah, the Hujjah of, uh, at the time, and his wasi was Abu Talib alayhi wa sallam. Hujjah. Hujjah, so Hujjah Abu Talib, ala al-ard. Abu Talib was, was the Hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On earth, at that Allah. time. And of course, it's not surprising, because we have hadith that لو خلت الأرض من حجة لساخت الأرض بأهلها. If, for blink of an eye, there is no hujja on earth, earth would implode. It will lose its uh, uh, stability. And this, this, this hadith is throughout, you can easily so, find it in the thing. At that time, at the time of Abu Talib, and uh, sorry, at the time of Abdul Muttalib, Abu Talib, Abdul Muttalib was the hujja. And his wasi, was Abu Talib alayhim as Subhanallah. How, how beautiful how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and views his, uh, his plans and wisdom. Now the thing that comes, to, if, if this is so I, I want true, to... if um, Abu Talib, Abdul Muttalib was the hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what I'm trying to understand is that during that time it was Ayyam Jahiliyyah. So we had mu'mineen, believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also a hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was in charge of the Kaaba. How did they end up in that area with idol worshippers? How did they end up having um, all these idols surrounding the Kaaba, um, idol worshippers coming from Yemen, from Syria? from Africa to do, perform the, the pilgrim, which obviously, if they as well were performing a pilgrimage, it had changed since the time of Nabi Ibrahim salam. But if, if Abdul Muttalib was there, the descendants as well from Hashim himself and before that, 
how was it possible that, because they were teaching the people as well, they were informing them. Because if you're a hujja, that means your job is to keep the message alive. How did the people deviate and just became so ignorant, so bad to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the best of the best Prophet, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for the worst of the worst, meaning the Quraysh. How did that happen? How is that? Well, the, uh, like uh, under any other circumstances, when you have a prophet and there are a lot of people who are deviant uh, from the prophet, in fact, they <coughs> fight the prophet. In the case of, for example, Nuh alayhi salam, he was uh, preaching to them for 950 years, according to the Quran. He was preaching to them for 950 years, and yet he, the majority of his population, of his uh, people, uh, were against him. And apparently, those who believed in him were something like in the, of the order of 80 people or so. So, uh, uh, even though he was the Hujjah, the Prophet Nuh, but despite that, and he was a prophet, but despite that, mm. uh, the majority of the people didn't listen to him. The same thing in here. Uh, we had um, people who were Mu'mineen, Muslimin, mm. who were uh, following the uh, religion of Ibrahim, if you like. And, um, but uh, uh, the majority of the people uh, didn't follow. And there is uh, no coercion. He, he, Abdul, Abdul Muttalib couldn't go along and sort of force people um, uh, to believe in him or to practice the teachings of uh, Islam or the deen of uh, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi <coughs> salam. There were those who did uh, and there were those who didn't and it became more widespread. This uh, <coughs> Jahiliya and the people who had strayed from the uh, right path, uh, the, the religion of Ibrahim became more and more to the extent that they started putting um, idols in the um, in the Kaaba and so on. Um, and he, there was nothing they could do about it. They just uh, allowed them. As much as what Nuh could do and as much as what uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi could do, he stayed 13 years in uh, Mecca and there were about uh, something like between, uh, let's say about maximum 200 people who believed in him. There isn't, uh, the Prophet himself, Khatim al-Anbiya, the final messenger, he came to Mecca and he stayed with them for 13 years. He couldn't get, he couldn't get the majority of the people of Mecca on his side. He got apparently between 100 or 200 people at most um, uh, to his cause, to his religion. So the same would be, or even to a lesser degree, at the time of uh, uh, al hujj uh, Abdul Muttalib. It says, it says al uh, Abdul Muttalib was Hujjah and Wawasiyuh uh, Abu Talib. Before, before the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny, did they um, build the foundation? Did they prepare the people for the coming of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Were they, were, they, were they informed themselves to inform the people as well, or they didn't know? They, they certainly themselves, they were informed. Um, it, uh, I haven't seen um, anything to the effect that they had a, uh, if you like, uh, a campaign or a mission that to inform the people of the final messenger. No, there was, I haven't seen something like that. But they certainly knew, there were some people knew, um, <clears throat> Even, um, if you like, uh, uh, other religions, Jews and Christians and so on, knew there will be a messenger coming and so on, according to their teachings and to their books and so on. Um, but nothing more than that. Uh, Jews and Christians knew that someone will be coming, a, a, a final, the, the, the last messenger will be coming. Um, and people like Abdul Muttalib or Abu Talib and so on knew who... Uh, this baby will be, this Muhammad will be, even when he, he, um, he was a, a teenager, they knew they could see signs and so on. But um, um, uh, they didn't have a specific campaign to inform the people about it. It, is, it has become known that um, uh, they refer to Umayyah as Umayyah ibn Abd Shams, uh, Umayyah the son of Abd Shams. 
scholars and researchers who uh, publish their works and so on, they say they have proven that Umayya was not the son of Abd Shams. Uh, and in fact, he was a, a Roman slave who was adopted, who was if you like bought by Abd Shams, and then he uh, freed him and he adopted him as a son. Mm -hmm.